Hello and welcome to a new card tutorial. This time we'll be stamping with watercolors um, and it's, it's actually easier than it sounds. What we're going to do is we're going to use the stress markers which go great with water and we're going to paint them directly onto a stamp. You can see that I've prepared everything here. This is the stamp set by Flourishes. It's called Italian Garden that we're going to use and we're going to use this tomato stamp which reminds me of my dad who is always in his garden and grows tomatoes by the tons. So we're going to use fired brick, um, forest moss, barn door and shabby shutters. These are the colors and uh, the reason we're using them is because I wanted to have a light and a darker color of each shade. I'm also going to use this rather tiny brush because there's a lot of detail in the stamp and I want to be able to, um, you know, go in into the detail. I'm just trying to figure out, because my sentiment is going to go there, where the stamp is supposed to go. And I'm picking it up with my acrylic block. And now I'm taking the distress marker directly onto the clear stamp. You're not hurting the stamp. This is exactly um, the same as if you would take it to your distress ink pad. But by using the marker, I have total control. Well, if I could see where I was painting, I have total control over where the color goes. So as you can see, I'm coloring in the um, tomato right here, just adding um, color here and there. And uh, I'm just speeding up the process a little bit now. And I can, um, I can go exactly where the tomato is without getting any of the red onto the leaves, which of course will be colored green. And it's not about being perfect, so don't worry about getting every single line in a stamp. This is just to give us a basic outline from which we can then do some water coloring. So don't worry about it and just um, try to color your stamp as best as possible. And I find it easier sometimes to turn the stamp to see um, what I'm doing. And I'm trying to figure out which area here um, is tomato and which is leaf. Um, actually, in this video, you can see the stamp a little bit better even than I was able to see it. Now I've sped up the process quite a bit. I'm adding the darker red into some of the areas that will have... Um, uh, the shadow. So basically where all these uh, lines are, that's where I'm adding some of the darker red. And now I'm adding the light green for the leaves. And I'm basically just um, taking my distress marker to the clear stamp. I'm not uh, using the very tip except for this very fine details here where I have to go between the red sections. But otherwise I'm um, like tilting my distress marker a bit and just going over the area. And it's rather fast. I mean, of course, I sped it up here, but it's still a rather fast process. And now I'm using the darker green. I'm just going into some of the areas to apply some accents. And once we start applying water to the stamp, you will see what happens. So now I'm stamping this out. I'm using a stamp mat beneath uh, the watercolor paper just to give it some gush, you know, so the stamp sinks in a bit and it's easier to get a good impression. And I'm not doing chest compressions. I'm just making sure that every part of the stamp has been pressed into um, <clears throat> the watercolor paper. Here you can see um, the result of this. You can clearly see the darker and the lighter colors. And now I'm taking my brush to this stamped image. I've just wiped, up so wiped off some water. The goal is just to have a little bit of water. And as you can see, um, it immediately starts to activate the colors. So the only thing that is on my brush is water and all the colors, that's all from this tiny bit of stamping. I'm always impressed about the distress markers. They're such an amazing tool. And right now, all I'm worrying about is to soften the lines a bit to activate the colors. I'm not worried about all the white space and if it blends correctly. Right now, I'm just going in with water being very careful um, in the section where there's green not to pull the green uh, in. And I'm moistening um, as much as I can of this, uh, of this area. Not necessarily because there's color, because there is none. But if I moisten it and then go into an area where there is a lot of color, the color will seep into the other areas. That's just the beauty of watercoloring. As you can see, I'm not taking particular 
care not to go outside the lines. This is not about being perfect. This is basically about having fun and making it look very artsy. You know, I can't like draw for the life of me. But this I can do, you know, adding water to a stamped image, that's easy, I can do this. And again, I'm just moistening the entire area because the color from the, you know, the colored sections will seep into the lighter sections and it will give it a very natural looking gradient. So I'm not going to touch it anymore, I'm just going to let it sit. And now I've again sped up the process and this is, I'm doing exactly the same thing here for the leaves. As you can see, I started off with an area that is away from the tomato I just colored, simply because I want to make sure that I don't have two wet areas next to each other and the, so the colors won't seep into each other. I've used a little bit too much water here, but I'm spreading it around, not dipping my brush into the, um, into the water cup again. And as I said, this is only water. so these few lines what we applied with the distress markers to the stem they have so much color it's very very impressive and i'm taking great care here um, when i go into the area that is close to the red that i've already colored because i don't want the green and the red to seep into each other if that is the look that you're going for that's completely fine but it's just not what i wanted for the stem again as you can see i'm not taking much care not to go outside the lines i like this distressed watercolory look that's exactly what I'm what I'm going for and now I'm once more going into the red sections moistening the entire area so the color will seep in there it's very relaxing and it's a lot of fun seriously I've this is one of the techniques I have the most fun with of all the things you can do in card making Now I'm picking up some color that I've scribbled onto a palette. This is basically pure red color from the distress marker and I'm only applying it into some of the areas to darken these areas, you know, to have this effect of light and shadow to give the, the stamped image some dimension. And there is no science really. Uh, all you do is basically look at the areas that the artist has already um, indicated with the lines to be the areas in the shadow. This is the picture once it's done. I've already dried it with my um, with my heat tool. And now I want to add some atmosphere, you know, some very, very light blue coloring around the edges. And at first I used my distress marker directly on paper, but then I got a little bit worried because I was, I mean, it blended out fine, but I was a little bit worried that if it wouldn't blend out fine, I would have this very artificial line on this otherwise, um, you know, very artsy and painterly looking picture so um, for the rest of the um, of the paper I basically scribbled the tumbled glass onto my palette and picked it up with my brush from there and I basically just went around the entire picture with the light blue color to you know to not have the tomatoes hang in mid-air in a completely white space that is completely you know not understandable what they're doing there <laughs> And that took a little bit of time, but that was fun as well. After that was done, um, before I adhered the panel to my card base, I decided that I wanted to um, have some green on the card base as well, because on the left there's going to be a part that will peek out. And I'm just applying some, I think it's peeled paint here, with my uh, mini blending tool. And I'm actually doing this all around. I'm not taking as much care at the top and on the other side of the card, but um, I'm taking care to have it everywhere because the panel is going to be 3D mounted and you, you will see the card base beneath it. And I think it would look kind of weird if you have all the green only on the left side and the other sides would be completely white. It could be okay, but I just felt um, that it was better to do it this way. At this point, my second battery died and my other battery was still charging, so I couldn't record the rest of the process, but I've included some stills of the final card. Here you can see the blue background, which I painted all around the tomatoes. I've also added a sentiment stamp from the same stamp set. I used Versa, uh, VersaFine ink for that. And then I adhered the card to my, well, the panel to my card base. You can see the 
uh, green peeking out to the left. And then I've also colored a strip of watercolor paper with the barn door um, distress color, the same color that I used on the tomatoes, and adhered a tiny strip of it also to the left just to give it some contrast because without it, it looked kind of boring. And for some sparkle, I added um, some pearls uh, in cream and in green. And that finishes up the card. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye!